<laughs> that sounds crazy. Like it seems like it must be really hard to mm -hmm. get into the world of writing songs for J Lo. I'm assuming you like probably were impressed by being able to write for J Lo. Like how the fuck crazy. did I just get into this position? I know it was crazy. I be getting compared like little little J Lo sometimes too. Just I was thinking that you probably hear Spanish, that. Spanish, I yeah. dance, you know. So I can see why they would like. Because, okay, there's a thing that happens with a label where it's like if you meet somebody and it's clear that they just are doing what they're doing and that's what you're going to be signing them for. But I could totally imagine that the label would look at you and be like, bro, she is pretty. She's cool. She's talented. She could dance. We are going to take this girl and just turn her into a star. Fuck mm -hmm. what she wants to do. We are mm -hmm. coaching her through whatever. Yeah. Well, luckily, like Def Jam, they let me do me. So mm. they really believe in me. They like my waves. So that's that's like... I'm great there. So. so you did like a bunch of different label meetings before you kind of like figured out who mm -hmm. you thought you could trust with your vision? Exactly. Yeah. I was kind of, I was in a group back then too. So it was like, we had just broken up and I was like hella sad, not knowing if I'm going to do music. Like, what I wasn't... was the group called? <laughs> it was called Curly Fries. Right. Curly Fries. Yes. <laughs> I know. Throwback. <laughs> were, were you a big Curly Fries supporter at the oh, time? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm big brother. You know, I got to support everything she does as long as she ain't doing no crazy shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, we were young. We were like a TLC type of vibe. Like, we were real commercial and like fun. And, wow. Like, that is fun. You know, we both danced and it was like that. Kind Do of you life. have any particular uh, affection for Curly Fries? You have it the Jack and Box? Jack in the box, they got pretty good curly fries. No, nah, man, I did not come up with that name, so don't even clown me, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just wondering where it came from. I hated from. that name so much. I'm like, ah. Why'd the group break up, though? Man, groups break up, right? Oh, Drama, okay. like, she just, she just went up. She still do music, too, so. Okay. You, know. you were young, but did you think your career was over? At that time, I was real, I was real shy and, like, not really, like, when I had was in a group, it was kind of like she could like ha have her moments and then I'll have my moments. So I felt like more comfortable. So when it was by myself, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, Ugh, let's, I don't know what to do. So I was definitely down. And then I ended up doing like this Bryson Tiller like comp compilation right. from his first album. And that like I dropped it on YouTube. I changed my whole hair. I changed my whole like Instagram, like everything, like after I got out the group. And I put it out, and it got so many plays on SoundCloud. It got so many, like, views on YouTube. And that was when I started getting, like, some clout for my music. So I was like, okay. It feels like whatever situation out. you end up in, you seem like you do pretty well in it and end up mm. making good relationships and, like, impressing people, huh? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I try to, man. That's that's all it's about in this game is, like, being cool with people, having exactly. a good, like, good, like, message. And, you know, so. It's I weird because that's, that. the, that's the thing you want to tell people when they ask you, like, how do I get into the industry? How do I, mm -hmm. like, do this, whatever? It's kind of like, yeah. well, the, like, how close you're standing to me right now and asking me the same question over and over <laughs> is probably part of the reason why it's not working out right now. You got to yeah, figure out yeah. how to fit in, bro. Facts. Yeah. Facts. That's a fact. You got to have the image, too. It just, you know, play the, you know, just look good. That's mm -hmm. yeah. You got, like, a velour do-rag on right now? Yeah, a little, uh, nah, what's it, uh. He's swaggy. You know what I'm saying? It's a little brother. hot under these lights. I'm impressed. <laughs> hey. I got a cute brother. Aw. Hey. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but I have to cover this before we get into like your most recent project, which I spent today in, in LA traffic driving around listening oh. to. But can we talk about when you got the Prince co-sign and exactly how that happened? Because that's mm -hmm. kind of astounding. I didn't expect to find out about that today. Oh yeah. No, that was crazy. I was in a... I was obviously out here and I had just been dancing like with different artists like that. So I was 18 and he found me somewhere. He never told me what it was, but mm. he found me online somewhere. I got an email one day from his two dancers saying Prince wants me to commit, uh, submit a choreography video to his song. I sent him the video of me dancing to his song and like he replied and was like, I want you to write a treatment. I got a whole budget for you. Like make this video happen. So right. Breakfast Can Waste out there on YouTube. You can check it out. But That's crazy. Yeah. But in, and you, he was just... He was just like your friend. Was it pretty? He like, was pretty much cool my friend level? after that. Yeah, like he he flew my whole family out to Paisley Park on a private jet. Like <laughs> on a private jet. Yeah, it was my what first the fuck? time. I was to meet Prince a couple of times. Yeah. even for Prince, a private jet is expensive as hell. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Shit. Great performer. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. crazy. Super he would talented. perform till he was like till like five crazy. in the morning. It was wild. Right. Yeah. yeah. How did you feel when he passed? I was hella sad. Like I was just like, damn, I wanted to do so much, and I wanted him to be a part of it. You know, because. But, you know, I always speak about him on interviews. They always ask me, so I was, he's definitely a part of me. But I was just like, it was crazy to me. He didn't do drugs. Like, he didn't drink. Like, seemed like he was healthy, so it was just wild. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. I was listening to him when I was such a young kid. Yeah. It was just like, it was wild when he imagine, passed. Like, you felt like he was going to be around forever. Yeah, yeah, and like being close to, like, a legend is like, dang, no way. Like, fuck. 
Damn, that's crazy. That is crazy. So influential, like changed the game. So mm-hmm. many, so many different levels. Yes. Okay, so you signed with Def Jam, and then like, what is the process like before you get your first project together? Um. Well, I got real cool with my A and R too, and we just were like brainstorming. He really helps me out with just like building a a plan for like my my come out. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I was a new artist still. Like, they signed me when I was at like 100k followers or something. And like I hadn't dropped anything really, I had just dropped singles. So they're like, all right, so let's build, let's build a like foundation and what we're gonna do, cause we really wanna just build fans for you and like have that be solid, cause you could drop singles here and there, but then people will just know you for a single. Let's let's put together a project. So we put together our project, um, my project, Summer with Friends. That was my first little EP, and then um, just a plan, you know. And then I ended up going on tour with Tiana Taylor, mm. so that helps me push that. And then right after I dropped my album. So then I went on my own tour after that. So it was really like all scheduled out for me and like everything was planned out. It's kind of the plane. Because it's like (laughs) you seem like you're like super talented and likable. But then at the same time, it's like, how do you package that and present it? Because it's like in a weird way, it feels like the audience is so primed and excited for like new female talent right now. But then at the same time, it is it feels like this weird like matrix type thing where you're like dodging lasers in terms of actually mm-hmm. making people really fuck with a new artist. Like it's yeah. getting, people are so weird, have so many like built in mm-hmm. misconceptions about what they're dealing with. Yeah. Well, the thing is with me, I think my like stronghold was dance too. Mm. I feel like back in the day that was Chris Brown, Beyonce, Aaliyah, like the artists that really like keyed in on dancing and like Missy Elliott, like showing that, like mm. being that a part of the brand. So I really wanted to like be the only girl. Like really, there's no other girl, even guy, like dancing really right now. So I get to do that with my music, and that was like the main thing, and just showing my style and like my personality too. So I feel like there's a, a lot of dancing going on, but it's like people doing the woe in the bathroom. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's not like the real choreographed like thing. Yeah. Like when you watch your videos, that's what always stands out. Is like this looks dope as fuck because it's like it has like real dancing going on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay, but on on your project, did you not know that Lil Baby was going to be the smash hit? Because it's like song number 11, which is not typically how you do it if you think it's going to be the single. Um, no, I mean, we put out the single first. Okay, that, but that was the single? Yeah, it was oh, the okay. single. Yeah. I don't know why we put it last. Yeah. No, it wasn't last. It's just sort of like sandwiched in like the later half of the album, which I was kind of surprised by because you got like the YB and Namir and YG feature like right at the front. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if that was like supposed to be maybe like the the hit. Oh, that was the second single? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is that always kind of like a weird thing from your perspective where it's like obviously you fuck with rap and stuff, but you're not quite a rapper and you have to like make the decision about putting rappers on certain songs and like that's going to bring in some audience? I think for me, it's kind of like I just kind of let the audience like pick. Mm. So for me, my mindset was just like we're going to see what people really fuck with organically like and just let people choose really. So that's honestly how it happened. Like. I I figured Can't Relate would do really good, you know. I thought maybe I thought Easy was gonna do fire, mm. you know what I mean? That's like an R and B record, so I have a lot of different type of vibes. So imagine it could have been Easy that went crazy, and that's a R and B records, or it could have been Can't Relate, that's a rap record. So it was just like let's see what happens. And the most played played a uh, second song was Can't Relate on the album. So yeah, and now I got Chris Brown on Easy remix. Really? About to job, I'm about to shoot the video. I got rehearsal tomorrow, and then the next day we uh, shooting the video. So who knows? That could just take it up crazy too, you know. So. That is crazy, yo. Mm. But that little baby song is like ridiculously huge. Like it's so. There's something about when you hear it, it just feels very familiar. Like it just, it just works. But you, you just wrote that by yourself, like. Uh, no, I, I wrote that with Jazzy and Vori. Okay. Jazzy and Vori. Yup. We was in the studio. Ism produced it. He showed me the 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 beat, and I was like, damn, this is crazy. I was like, how old are you? He was like 19. I was like, oh, you a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it started? That's literally how it happened. And then Jazzy was like, little baby. He was like, ooh, my little baby. And then literally <laughs> just like... We decided we in and then went in the booth and just wrote it. Yeah, that song is like a comp, uh, like it's a compliment in a weird way too. I believe it that you wrote it, but like everybody when I was playing it today and stuff, like my friends who are like music industry friends, were like, "You think she wrote that?" I'm like, "I, I honestly have no idea." It seems like kind of like too good. Like I don't know, mm-hmm. maybe the music industry is crazy. There's there's a whole machine out there. No facts. I write on everything that I do. So who are the artists people compare you to? Mm. Okay, so I've gotten a couple. I've gotten. Female Sway Lee, 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just funny. like melodies and stuff. I could hear the comparison. That's um, a good compliment. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, I've gotten female Chris Brown for okay. sure. I've gotten Aaliyah. Um, I've gotten Rihanna sometimes. Um, I feel like from the label perspective, they're like, if we do this right, this yeah, is yeah, our Rihanna. Ariana Grande? No, our Rihanna. Oh, like, our like Rihanna. That they yeah. could kind of... They see her potential Baby and they're Bibi. like, dude, she mm-hmm. she could be that. I see it too. I'm like, if I were at the label, I'd be like, I get it. I I, yeah. I see the vision. Yeah. No facts. That's that's the goal. She's one of my like biggest inspirations. She's just a boss woman. I like her music is woman. so dope, but then also just like the the her the vibe. image, the vibe, yeah. everything about She's it is star, crazy. Fuck like, yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel about myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I see it too for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, shoot, who else have I been compared to? I, I've gotten, I've gotten, I've gotten Travis Scott vibes before. I ain't gonna friend. I like that you just vibe. so casually just throw all these like male rap performers in your. You're not gonna be limited to like, oh, I gotta be like girls. Oh yeah, no, nah, no, nah. I like that because I think my music guys could listen to it and females, so it's like both. Mm. I love making music for everybody, like you know. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any like rappers that you've been listening to in particular that you could see yourself working well together uh, um, that you haven't worked with yet? <clears throat> I want to work with Roddy Rich. Mm. We already exchanged like email. I mean, not emails, numbers and stuff. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But um, I want to work with Gunna. <clears throat> Damn. <laughs> Shotty Roddy Rich. Uh, he was in the studio. We was in the studio the day in Miami too. Dude, he's super fire. Yeah, he's fire. Yeah, he's crazy. He can tell you focus and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. 